A very good day to you. I'd like to ask you a question this morning. Are you feeling rejected today? Have you got friends that have left you? Are you feeling ostracized at work? Maybe because of your, I don't know, because of your color, maybe because of your language, maybe because of your sex. Are you feeling rejected? Um, maybe because you don't participate in what other people do and so they've rejected you. You haven't done anything wrong. It's just that you don't drink and you don't fornicate and you don't watch blue movies and you don't, you're not caught up with pornography. Maybe you've been rejected by the others. That feeling of rejection. Well, I want to tell you this. There is a man who knows exactly how you feel today. And his name is Jesus Christ, the carpenter from Nazareth. If we go to the Word of God in John chapter 6 and verse 66, this is what the Bible says, and I'm reading it to you now. It says, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. I've heard it said that Jesus had up to 120 disciples, but he ended up only with 12. They went back and they walked with him no more. I think you'll probably find they said to him, Listen, Lord, you know, it's uh, getting too much now. We're overdoing it, everything in moderation. Um, Jesus did not budge. He did not soften. He did not compromise. He did not say, well, come back and let's talk about it again. They went away. The same thing happened to the rich young ruler, remember? He said, I've obeyed every commandment in the Bible from when I was a small boy. And the Lord said, well, one thing you still need to do. Go and sell all your riches because Jesus knew it was an idol in his life. And then come and follow me. And the Bible says that he walked away. He couldn't do that, you see. Now, folks, we understand that he walked away to hell. Why? Because God wasn't the first person in his life. Jesus didn't run after him, and he didn't run after the disciples that left him. He even said, and what about you, Peter? And Peter said, Lord, we've got nowhere to go. He actually acknowledged the Lord as having the word of life. You see, folks, we cannot fulfill our, our journey on earth with Jesus without His Holy Spirit. What I think happened was the 120 that went with Jesus, they were caught up with the miracles, the signs, the wonders. The Lord always had food and drink for them. He took care of them. But when it started getting tough and when He started getting persecuted, they didn't want that and they fell back. I think it happens with a lot of us. It saddens me when I think of some of the friends that I started my journey with, my Christian journey, are no longer on the road. They have turned back. They've gone back to Egypt. They said, it's too hard. We can't do this. Folks, I want to tell you there is no other way. I think of that beautiful scripture in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since you and I are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us press on. Let us Lay aside that sin which so easily ensnares us, and with perseverance look unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is seated at God's right hand. I want to encourage you, don't be moved by the crowds. Follow the, the, the Son of God, and He will see you home. You know that even those 12 that did walk with him, even one of them, he says it himself, go and read it. John chapter 6 and from verse 66 onwards. And even one of them had the devil in him. His name was Judas Iscariot and he still betrayed the Lord. That's the son of God. So if you're feeling rejected today, don't lose heart. If the son of God, the creator of heaven and earth, could have 12 men left after he had over 120 don't worry if people are rejecting you, as long as God does not reject you. That's the most important thing. And He'll never do that if you're walking in holiness. Have a great day. God bless.